Welcome back to another episode, everybody. Uh, my name's Emery Wolf. Joining me is Nick Lamb. And you can see a third guy with us today. His name is Dave Marshall, and he is the president of, president or CEO, Dave? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, he runs it all, Flick Films, out in Alberta. Yeah or flick film, I should say. So if people are not familiar with flick film, uh, how would you describe what it is you guys do? Oh, we're blenders of photochemicals. We uh, finish film or convert film from large reels into cassettes, 35 millimeter cassettes. And we assemble, build and distribute uh, analog photo accessories. So how did you get into that, Dave? Uh, I have a little camera store, a little analog camera store that I started a few years ago called the Film Experience Camera Store. And that kind of uh, kind of got a little bit bigger. I was buying larger quantities of, uh, of products as we were specializing in film. So I started distributing that to uh, other camera stores. Because uh, um, analog was just sort of um, stumbling along at that time. A lot of stores just wanted small quantities of stuff. But I found the uh, suppliers were not wildly reliable. Uh, there were a lot of things happening with, uh, you know, Kodak Alaris uh, sold their chemical division to a company called Sino Promise, whose specialty was distribution, but probably not manufacturing. Um, uh, Unicolor had bumped into great problems with uh, supplying their C41 at that time. And I, I just kind of got pissed off and uh, started blending my own chemicals and we started you know packaging up those chemicals not just for my customers but for others and this sounds like the story of Amory except he just he's just pissed off he didn't do anything <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll always just angry actually Nick it's funny you say that because that's sort of like how this started so I honestly don't know where I heard of flick originally but I had reached out to buy some product because I started doing some film work um, and I really wanted to be developing my own stuff because I kind of, I like the experimental side too, that I can like mess it up and it would work out. Um, and then eventually I, I had to buy stuff from the camera store in Calgary, got it shipped out or whatever. And I finally, like a year later, got to develop my own film. And then I reached out to Dave again to say, Dave, what did I do wrong here? Um, <laughs> I'll probably show some stuff here eventually, but uh, Dave, maybe what are the, the first like common things people get wrong when they're, they try developing color film for the first time? Uh, they're always the same two things. There's only two critical things besides your photograph itself. Of course, that can't be critical too. <laughs> That's probably what I got wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Strictly talking developing, man, it would be, it's really just two things, and that is a time and temperature. And color developing actually requires a very, very accurate uh, temperature, much more so than the time. Time is key, not just changes saturation, you know, development quantity. Temperature changes everything. You can get all sorts of oddities with bad temperatures. Okay, that's that's what I started to think is what I did wrong. So um, inside the box, I'll maybe just show it here. There's the this uh, what to actually do with the processing kit. So I went through everything when I mix the chemicals. I want to get to like one of your products here too. Like I'm antsy to get to it because I feel like it's going to solve all my problems. But I find it interesting that Emery and I spent about an hour on the phone just talking about time. And I was convinced that you'd messed up the time. And we were trying to figure out, okay, is it one minute that we'll push it to stop? Is it 15 minutes? And But yeah, that's interesting to know that it's all more about temperature than time. That's cool. Well, 30, 30 seconds, a 30% 30, 30 time differential is one, one stop push. Right. A 30% time differential is one stop push. That's right. Okay. And does that work the same way for a pull or is it, is it a different ratio if you're pulling? 
That's a great question. Nobody pulls film anymore. It used to be really fun. Right? <laughs> you know, everybody wants to push film. I think that's a, that's a result of people on YouTube that want to talk about things they don't know about. Uh, it, it's a funny deal. Uh, neither pushing or pulling is wildly necessary. You know, more important is pick the right film stock and, uh, you know, either shoot with a tripod or, uh, you know, it, there are lots of ways to avoid pushing and pulling film. Uh, but people do that. Yeah, 30% either direction. You uh, haven't shot with me or Emery where we'll set our uh, ISO wrong in the camera. Right. And then it'll require a push or pull based on your user error. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, that'll happen for sure. But uh, we, we talked about like DOPs and how they would actually like specifically push or pull for a certain yeah. effect. Uh, like, you know, to use like a low low light situation and if you wanted to get more detail out of your your gray areas i guess so would you push in that no since you obviously I, you push to make it brighter but you'll get more detail by pushing no no you're, you're gonna uh, most people pull if you're talking about shadow detail i think uh, Aaron, you were saying okay. yeah you know you're gonna pull for shadow detail um most of pushing it was you know it really came from wedding photographers here, you know, first off you're outside, then you, you go inside and when all of a sudden you're, you're short of light. So you, you, you push, you know, and depending on the huh. stock you're using. So you'd push for that and you get back outside and you're shooting with normal film. And it's a funny thing, but I, I really think that a lot of the talk on pushing film is really, um, uh, a little more based on just people talking rather than the, the reality of shooting and doing good photography. I don't know, like most, most guys I know that are pros and I've got a lot of customers that are professional photographers. Uh, they just shoot block speed, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. Sure. Uh, going back to like what I did wrong. So I mixed up all my chemicals. It says in here, you know, for the developer to be at 45 degrees Celsius um, and then with the bleach to be at 38. So I made my own little bath in my sink and heated them up. I've got like a little, I would call it like a turkey tester temperature thing. And I mixed them up. And the first thing I thought went wrong was when I mixed the developer. And so I had all the water in and I thought, think what I should have done is mix the chemical together and then dump the water in? Uh, no, actually, it doesn't. No, if you put part A in, mix it and add part B, that won't, that won't hurt a thing. Uh, it kind of like foamed up on me when I did yeah, it, which I thought was weird. It does that? Well, that, yeah, that's why they're not in the same package. <laughs> so <Nah. laughs> um, they, do, they do react. There's a reaction that happens between the, uh, one of the components of the, of the uh, developer B with one of the components in, the, in part A. Uh, but no, that, that, that shouldn't hurt. Um, those temperatures, too, when you're mixing the, mixing the stuff aren't critical. You know, they're just make it easier. Okay. The developer dissolves a whole lot better at 45 than it does at 38. But if you did it at 38, that wouldn't be an issue. It's the developing itself that you need to be really accurate on the temperature. <laughs> I'm laughing because that's exactly where I, I like switched it. I'm like, ah, it can't be that important on the, the actual <laughs> like developing right. side. So like I, I made another bath, put the water in, let it sit there for a few minutes, got impatient, was like, okay, I'm good to go. And I just, I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to stick the turkey temperature thermometer thing in. It's pr it's got to be close enough, and, and then did it. So I'm assuming the result I got here is sort of based on that. Yeah, you got some pretty wild color shifts. But the other thing you're saying there is using a turkey thermometer. Uh, you really want to use a calibrated thermometer. Check your thermometer against something else because you know I've had a, I had a guy tell me. Whatever water baths, it would never get to temperature. And you know, they said, they said, well, like, what do you mean? Is it like a half a degree off, a degree off? So, yeah, it won't get within. It's always stuck at a degree short of where it's supposed to be. And what are you using for? You know, I mean, really, uh, it shouldn't just be stuck there. And uh, it turned out he was using a candy thermometer, you know, which is plus or minus <laughs> eight Celsius or something. You know, it's just absurd. But yeah. yeah, checking having a good calibrated thermometer. Um, anybody who's worked in a lab, you know, they they know all about calibrating their thermometers before they go out and bodge up customers' pile of work. And 
I guess that's my answer yeah. for the next thing too. So is that gonna... gravy I see on there with your turkey thermometer? <laughs> this might be some like, yeah, fingerprints or something. I wasn't real. So now here's the other thing too. I was using these, these, uh, uh, kind of Loma Chrome films. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but sure. they're kind of like effect films. Yeah. And, uh, I was just trying them out to see what they'd be like. And then, uh, I also feel like that was like part of my problem too. Cause like, I don't, I don't understand when I flop this, why it's so blue and why I would have to like do so much to try and get it to where it probably should be. Yeah. I don't think you're ever going to get it there because once the silver is done, it's saying it's done, but I can tell from your photo that it developed because yeah. you've, got, you've got pretty mm -hmm. good detail. Like there's pretty good detail in the figures. There's good, uh, there's good uh, color sap or there's separation in the in the highlights and the you know it, all that happened, but you've got some wicked wicked color shifts, obviously, and that, that tells me that that tells me that the uh, uh, dye couplers didn't do the job properly, which are the the, the little well, as I say, the dye couplers they they, they, they grab onto the silver essentially, and so it looks to me like you. I mean, this is closer to black and white than it is to color, right? So yeah, when you look at the film, it's like black. Yeah, yeah, pretty dark. Yeah. So you you're it looks to me like you have great detail on it. There's great detail on all these people and stuff, you know. And uh it looks to me like the developer worked, but the die couplers didn't necessarily work uh the way they should, which is strictly a temperature thing. All right. So next time, next time I've got to be more specific about my temperature, which I think is probably good advice. And where I, where I started to lean like this is probably what went wrong. Um, the one thing, Dave, I want to talk to you about. So now you guys are a company, you sell products. Um, it's one of your accessories and I'm willing to bet you could guess which one. But, uh, <laughs> person... Temperature water bath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly the one. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Um, is it something that, like, if I ask Don's photo, actually, that's another good point. Your now flick film is sold in Regina. Uh, if you go into their their uh, into Don's photos room where they sell their developer stuff, uh, they have color and black and white from Flick in there that you can get. But what I didn't see was that precision temperature water bath. Um, is that something I can maybe like ask them to bring in for me? Absolutely, yeah, we, a lot of um, a lot of retailers, to be fair, like a lot of the retailers aren't, aren't uh, uh, they're, they're a little taken aback by the upswing in film. And a lot of the people working uh, don't come from that era, you know? And so they, this stuff doesn't necessarily click with them immediately i talk to you know old guys like guys my age you know i talk about the water bath and oh well man, i gotta have one of the you know but you talk to uh, you talk to somebody who's not familiar and they're not they're not quite getting it but absolutely dawns will bring it in for you yeah they uh, they order they order special stuff from us and they would do that but it's a great uh it was a product that i uh i after hearing and seeing so many so many people coming to my little camera store with uh, pictures of their problems, uh, the ninety-nine percent were based on uh, ninety-nine percent of their problems were based on temperature. So we, I, I looked at it, and you know, I, I have a, I, I use a Jobo, which has got a, a, a temperature control and a water bath, and you know, and uh, even that is not wickedly accurate with a well, because it's a it's a pretty much on heat off heat um, uh, immersion immersion heater like your hot water tank you know in a in a pile of water so you you know the temperature goes up over and goes down below and up over and down below so it's kind of as soon as you hit temperature you develop and you you know kind of hope like hell everything holds together uh, I still use like I I still use a Jobo but I actually heat my chemicals in one of those water baths in, in my prototype one actually. As I was uh, having it developed and stuck together, um, I still have that kicking around, and uh, it still gets in use. And it's because I don't like leaving sight things to chance, you know. Especially with the price of film nowadays, the roll of Portra four hundred is north of twenty bucks, and uh, uh, doesn't take that many rolls of blown film to pay off. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, like I, I destroyed 36 uh, photos for 18 bucks on here. So right, that's right. fun. And then, and then I racked another uh, 36 for 15 bucks on this back. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, sure. Without too much detail too, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but is the, the precision water bath, that's the, the most expensive item you guys sell too, right? Oh, um, gee, I never thought of that. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's kind of like the biggest unit or biggest thing in there um or maybe like no i don't even think that would cost as much the the tool kit no, no, like that. That retails at 75 bucks yeah um i was going looking at some of the other products there too uh so some of the stuff like why why is there a difference between different black and white developers um Classic MQ is the same as D76 or Ilford ID11. It's a very old formula. Everybody's got, got it. Everybody's got the same formula. Um, and it's just a tried and true uh, MQ because it's metal and hydroquinone. Uh, the black and white cinefilm developer is specifically done for uh, Kodak Double X originally, or actually um, Plus X is what they, I believe they originally did it for. Which is a fantastic film, no longer made. Uh, it is a little slower developer, so it pulls shadows a bit better. You know, Double X is a very high dynamic range film, but using the wrong developer it may not pull all those shadows. The uh, this that developer is made to kind of pull shadows and and give you that extra dynamic range, which in movie film is pretty important because movies pan. You know, the the camera pan doesn't sit there and stare at one spot, so you can go through two or the camera can go through two or three different sort of serious light changes and you don't want it blowing out and having all sorts of problems. So um, MQ19, that's a, that's an old x-ray developer, D19. And it kind of, <laughs> it became very popular. Uh, uh, probably in the seventies, people would use uh, D19. I think, uh, what was it? Uh, Brett Weston did a lot of stuff with that. Very, very high contrast. Uh, 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 a developer. It's just popular with a lot of people. I kind of like it, you know, if you go out and shoot a hayfield with a bunch of uh, rolled up bales, you know, it can be fairly dull. So you use a super high contrast developer, a very slow film, and all of a sudden you've got a, an interesting looking image that everybody else who went out and took the same hay bales is definitely not going to get. So. <laughs> um, the black, white, and green was something I was kind of looking at too, which sounded interesting to me. Yeah, I had an inquiry from Ireland yesterday. We're going to buy black, white, and green in Ireland. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's our uh, it's our health food developer. Our <laughs> I was just going to highlight that. <laughs> like that's what I find interesting about it. So it's made with vitamin C, Nick. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, ID eleven. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, Kodak. Uh, what the heck is that now? Um, Kodak has a. Uh, a vitamin C developer, and they use uh, phenidone as well. Um, but you have to buy a five liter thing of it because uh, the phenidone is uh, very hard to integrate into the developer. It's just quite complex. We do it in a an alkaline solvent uh, that's also used for shampoo and hand cream. <laughs> so we have the, the solvent of shampoo and hand cream. We use very little too. Five milligrams will make the 500 milliliter mix for a Patterson tank. So this is a personal question that I just have about um, is it the same type of solution that would uh, resolve a cine film as a uh, still film? Or would it well, be a completely that's different, a different thing. That's, that is a different developer altogether. That's uh, ECN2. So that would, the only reason I, cause I've, I used to load film on movies. Like that was my job. Oh, yeah. So I'd load up thousand foot rolls of film sure. like all day long, way, way back when I was a lot younger. Yeah. So what it's this, uh, this one here that you're talking about would actually do that. Okay. And then the one I use, uh, because most of your still photography is C41, which I actually learned by emailing Dave. Cause I didn't even know that. I'm like, like yeah. what, 
what's the difference? Like, I, I had no idea. Uh, and it, I, actually, Dave, you could probably talk to this, but like, it's totally different chemical, right? Yeah, it's, it's different, uh, different dye couplers again. So that's what gives you the color of the dye couplers or, or color bonds to the silver. Um, and the developer, which is reactive to the dye couplers in C41 is not remotely close to the uh, developer in ECN2. Now, ECN2 is actually an old developer. An old, it's called a color developer. It's a small component of the overall developer. And uh, it's old, it goes way back. Um, uh, uh, it's called CD3, and of course, C41 is CD4, which is the following <laughs> later model. Um, CD3 is shared with slide film. The slide film, which you got a high degree of richness, um, they, they share quite a few components in the, in the emulsion and in the, uh, in the developers. So, uh, difference between the two, uh, if you use, if you do uh, movie film in C41, I figured on an average it's about a 400 degree Kelvin temperature shift so that your colors get wonky by 400 degrees Kelvin, which makes people's complexion kind of greenish. You know, which, Interesting. That's yeah. Sony's digital platform too. <laughs> <laughs> Canon, um, I find goes red. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, one of the other things I wanted to talk about, and I should actually almost grab it. So back on the table behind me is actually everything. So I got the, I can't point to it, but developer, uh, stop, bath, bleach, fixer, and then the stabilizer. Yep. Uh, one of the classic blenders I did, Dave, and when I actually stopped reading because no one reads anything anymore, I rinsed F the film after I used the stabilizer, got it out, and I've got like water blotches on my stuff. And I'm like, like I didn't think that was supposed to happen. Go back and read it. And like, oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah, you can but, add you can add a photo flow. You know, you throw photo flow on everything. Um, yeah. And photo flow is just Kodaxing. It became a term for everybody's wedding agent. We make slick 200 because it's slick and slippery. And you get a 200 to one mixture. So um, that's our, you know, that's our thing. It's actually essentially identical to Kodak's formula because uh, they're so good at what we do. We like to steal their ideas. <laughs> well, I have to ask, what do you, you know, it seems like you know this stuff inside out. Like, what do you use personally? What's your kind of go-to? Well, I use, I use, uh, I mostly shoot black and white. Um, I have been shooting more vision film, but that's a different kind of story. But yeah, I mostly shoot black and white and I'm pretty traditional. I like, uh, I like classic MQ or, you know, D76 uh, one-to-one. And it's just something I've been doing for so long that, you know, it's working. So, uh, you know, I, I tend to stick with it. I do test everything, you know. Um, and, you know, we don't put out anything I don't like, that's for sure. I've got to like it. <laughs> so I can make, you know, I can make road and all, for example. But I, I just, I personally find it like taking a sledgehammer to, to, to film. And I, you know, we could make it in a heartbeat. And there's a market for it that. It's kind of me. I look at it. And I don't like it, so I'm not making it. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Would you Would you call yourself a, a photographer still, Dave, or are you more? I retired in 2007. <laughs> like just from photography, though. No, no, from uh, real estate development and construction. Oh wow! And then I <laughs> I picked up. You know, I I had already had you know, I had. You know, good cameras or whatever for a long time and uh, i just i just kind of went flat out of that and that got carried away and here we sit talking you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great so was it just a like a hobby for you that turned into this yeah yeah pretty much it was a hobby but i got i'm, I'm a flat out you know i'm a i'm a i'm a, I'm a hardcore entrepreneur flat out capitalist you know so i, I looked at the industry and it, it was a, you know, it was a wonderful industry. Kodak was an incredible company. It, they had the highest customer service levels. They, you know, they just, they were incredible at one time. And then, you know, through 
uh, financial wranglings and changes of personnel. They they lost a lot of that. It's still there. I've talked to uh, people at Kodak. And it's still there with a lot of the employees, and it's kind of growing back into that culture. But there was a big gap there, you know, and I think you know, Ilford went through trouble. They've got great people, too. But I think on the on the, the part where those companies interact with the, the customer, the end user, I think there's a huge gap, huge, huge, massive gap, you know, and I, I could see that. You know, I don't know why I started my cam. I started my camera store out of a lark. I, I, I just saw something there, and I ended up talking to these, you know, all these young kids coming in, and they're just awesome. Like they're they're so full of enthusiasm, doing really really cool stuff. Like some of them are doing some very innovative, uh, uh, inspiring stuff. And but at the same time, they you know a lot of them don't have a lot of money. They're kind of scraping stuff together and, you know, kind of feel like a drug dealer sometimes. I'm taking the last 20 bucks for that roll of Portra. <laughs> but the, uh, they, the, the thing that was missing was that connect to those those kids. And those kids, I shouldn't say kids, they are to me because I'm so old, but they, you know, these 25-year-olds that, you know, 18 to 25-year-olds that make up the real driving force behind this resurgent are just, ignored you know so we took a lot of our products and just downsized them to bite size you know so they can walk in they can they can you know for 20 bucks they can walk out with enough stuff to do uh 10 rolls of film or whatever you know and chemicals and you know kodak went the other way they they, they took their most most popular the single chemical photochemical in the market was uh d76 one liter pack so when Kodak Alera sold that to Sino Promise in China. The first thing they did was eliminate it. And I'm just looking at this like, and you guys be kidding me. Like, how, how does an entrepreneur choke that down? You know, you look at, okay, we got the single most popular package in the world. What do you want to do? Ha! Chop it, you know? <laughs> so, wow. So I, I, just, I just thought there was a massive hole there. And, you know, we started filling it. And it turned out it was right. And so they just kind of got carried away. So by last, good grief, uh, we started this two years ago, not quite two years ago. Started this a year and 10 months ago, eight months ago. And one year into it, not a year into it, yeah, less than a year into it, I started construction on a, a new facility to blend chemicals. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, for our distribution and our blending and a, and a place to, we, we have machines, a thousand foot mach rolling machines that we've got two of. We just got two more under construction plus upgrades for the two we got because we're rolling film left, right, and center. And what are we doing with that? We're just filling gaps, you know. So we got, you know, I just went, I was at the airport this morning picking up a, a shipment of film for us from Europe. We are bringing on our new Ultra Pan 100 and an Ultra Pan 400. Which is going to be a reasonably priced black and white film. That's kind of that like big business mentality, right? The Google of things. If it's not making enough money, they just sort of discard it, and then it definitely leaves those holes that you're filling. Well, yeah, yeah. I think um, it was a big business. It was an enormous business, and it became a cottage industry. So what happened with these companies? And it's not their fault. I mean, they got all this infrastructure and machinery and stuff that is wonderful for producing, you know, a gazillion cassettes a day or whatever, you know, and, and chemicals by the, uh, by the train load, but it's a cottage industry now. So we just turned it around and turned it on its head and our production area where you can, we can run six lines at a time running different chemicals, running small quantities, especially things like our MQ-19, you know, the, uh, uh, the old X-ray developer, we could do small quantities of that. Somebody that came from a, a Bo Photo, a great customer of ours out in Vancouver. Uh, the manager there got a hold of me and said, I've got these customers that all want D19. Can you make that? Four days later, we had it on her shelves. Oh, wow. wow. So nice. Four days, right? So we run a little cottage industry. It's a little hectic, you know. I mean, it's getting to be a ridiculous sized cottage. <laughs> <laughs> But it's I guess not so retired. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah not so retired. Yeah, 
Yeah. I guess too, you're you're running everything out of Longview, Alberta, which isn't a very big town either. But I, I'm assuming like it's close enough to Calgary that people are like, ah, oh, you know, there's sort of some novelty maybe going out there. Yeah, I'd like to correct one thing. It's not big enough to be a town. <laughs> <laughs> When I, when I moved here, the population went from 305 to 306. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, it's just close enough. It, it doesn't matter where we are uh, because everything goes out of here in trucks and everything comes in here in trucks. And, uh, you know, it, it just doesn't matter. Like I, I just shipped our first uh, chemical shipment to Hong Kong. Wow. Do they care if we come out of Hong Kong? No, never mind. No. Actually, we just sent one to South Korea as well. And that's they're, crazy. Yeah, they're starting so wor- worldwide. Yeah. 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 And well, all from Longview, Alberta. Yeah, well, we're the I think we're the I think we're the largest taxpayer in Longview now. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Uh, um, we've only got a few minutes left here. Uh, Nick, do you have any last questions or anything on your mind you want to pick Dave's mind about? Well, I'm curious, like where it, you said it's picking up. So is, have you noticed an increase in sales and purchases? That's fascinating. Cause I, I'd kind of forgotten about film, even though I grew up in it, but then now Emery's getting into it and I'm kind of hearing about more people starting to get back into it. Um, what's your perspective on it? Oh, it's yeah, it's leaps and bounds. <clears throat> it's huge. You know, the uh, uh, there is well, right now, right now, Kodak is unable to make uh, like 35 millimeter film at the rate they should be because there's a massive problem with the steel. Uh, it's hard to believe, but the steel that made they use to make cassettes is no longer made. And the industry is, oh. is the industry is too small for someone to make that particular steel blend. Um, you know, when they can go out and make stuff for car body, obviously car body takes up a lot more steel <laughs> cassette does, you know. Yeah. So there's a problem there that that has has actually slowed things down. Film would be growing faster if Kodak was actually able to produce back at their old they're, they're doing their machines over they're rebuilding the machines to manage to with the steel but they're really kind of working limping until uh, uh january february so can you get into that or is that just a totally another Sorry? ball game can you get into film the oh, we actual... do. yeah we do so, so you can kind of fill that gap i guess yeah we use uh i started doing uh we kind of geared a lot of our stuff geared for uh, sustainability, and uh, so our, our our packaging is all super simple. Everything comes in you know brown paper packaging and that kind of stuff. It's very everything is really quite simple. <laughs> Both oh, colors. nice. So we um, we started off with our film. If you um, actually, if you go scroll back up to products. And then hit uh, hit film, cine film, film and paper down one. Oh, this is great. So it's not just developing in the stuff no, at no. all. It's the other side. Oh, I love that. Yeah, so we, we do Vision 3 film. Uh, because Vision 3 is a funny thing. It, it's, a, it's probably the finest film on the market. There's very little that can touch Vision 3 for quality. But it's got to be done in the right developer. Uh, Sunnistil did the world a great service by bringing Vision 3 to everybody's attention. And they did a great disservice by demonizing Remjet, which is just the anti halation layer and the anti static layer in the back, and then trying to convince people that it should be processed in C41. This stuff processed properly. It's incredible. In my, in my camera store, I've got a photo. It's on actually the same photos on our uh, Instagram page for Flick Film. And it's just a, a little building, uh, a little grain, uh, grain storage bin uh, down the road here. And I've got it printed 24 inches by 16 inches off a 35 millimeter film. People come in, look at that, and they go, I, I've never seen anything like that, you know. And that's that's wow. Vision 3, you know. And, it, it, and you look at movies, you know, like, I don't know if you've ever seen The Unforgiven, Clint Eastwood. Uh, when... 
Well, Emery will bring it up and show yeah. me later. But it was it was in the nineties. You know, it was just so it's this great. Oh, yeah. Clint yeah, Eastwood is riding a horse across these incredible, rich, deep, rich uh, green fields. You know, they're and that's just south of here. They're just barely south of here. 20, 20 minutes south of here, they shot that. And I go down there and I look at it and go, man, man, that vision film is something else because this stuff never looks like that down here. It's never that lush. <laughs> it's even this little photo I have sitting in my store. You know, you get this incredibly lush looking field, brilliant skies, on and on and on. So that's vision three, you know, incredible film. Um, so we, we we brought the developer out. To, somebody else had done that. The Kodak still makes it, but they make it in, you know, gazillion gallon quantities for the movie business. Yeah. Another guy had come out and he'd done it. He, he did, he wasn't really making his own. He was having that contracted, and, you know, too many people stepped in the middle and it was very expensive. And we did it. And I thought, this is, this costs us the same as C41. So we sell it for the same as C41. Oh, wow. And, but then the other thing I did, I was looking, it's got huge capacity. Now, there we are. Yeah, scroll down right in the middle there, that little building with the trees. Yeah, click on that guy. I printed that 24 by 16. Oh. And, it's, and you see this. Wow. Look at the clouds. Nothing is blown out. I mean, try that with your digital camera. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's That's no, incredible. There's no, uh, there's no filter. There's no polarizer on that. That's just <laughs> shot in the hardest light possible in the middle of the day. And this is Instagram. This is like a 500 kilobyte file. Oh, yeah. You know, so in the real deal, it looks, it looks, very rich and spectacular. There's one down farther on the left hand. Oh, that's that's double X. That's the movie, the black and white movie film. But down on the left, uh, another photo that's uh, yeah, that little that little Barney looking thing with a van in front. Oh, wow! And the color of the trees in the back, you know, everything is just it's just incredible, and it's not you have to monkey around in Lightroom to get back, you know, you, you just, it's just there. It's incredible film. That's so amazing. Why are people shooting film? Well, dynamic range for one. You never get that dynamic range out of uh, digital. I know I've got, you know, a couple of very good digital cameras. <laughs> I, I, I know I can't get that out of them. Um, there, oh, um, wow. Yeah, we're about to get cut off here, Dave. So I think sure. we'll maybe stop at that. I think we could probably talk for hours, but thanks for coming on. This has been a blast. Oh. Uh, everybody should check out flickfilm.ca, I believe it is. It is, it is. And uh, check out all the products. If you're in Regina, Don's photo is carrying it. 